Today we're going to talk about electromagnetic radiation. I want to define it first. Electromagnetic radiation is energy that travels in a wave-like form without the need for a medium. What do I mean by that, a medium? Yeah, yeah something to travel through. So electromagnetic radiation is energy that travels as a wave. It doesn't necessarily have to travel through something, unlike a mechanical wave, which also carries energy, but needs a medium to travel through. Sound, what you're hearing right now is a mechanical wave. It carries energy just like an electromagnetic wave does, except it needs air or water or steel or some kind of medium to travel through. Electromagnetic radiation can travel through a medium, but it doesn't need that medium. Look up in the sky right now, we're going to see light coming from the sun. That light that we see coming from the sun originated at the sun, by the way, eight minutes ago. It traveled through mostly empty space on its way to the earth and made it here no problem through mostly empty space. Electromagnetic radiation, energy that travels in a wave-like form without the need for something to travel through. Now, what does it consist of exactly? I'm going to do some things with my hands right now. So just have a look up here and see if you can kind of recognize what I'm trying to demonstrate with my hands right now. Um, electromagnetic radiation consists of an electric field, which we looked at two units ago. It also consists of a magnetic field, which we looked at last unit. Those two fields are both sinusoidal. What do I mean by that? Sine waves, right? When we picture a wave, that's what we picture, a sinusoidal wave. These fields are both sinusoidal, and they are perpendicular to each other. So if one of them is like this, one of them is like this. And they are in phase with each other, which means that when we have a crest of one, we have a crest of the other going at the same time. So now follow my hands as they go from one side to the other here, okay? This is hard, by the way. It's kind of like that, like this. Jump it. Doing a bunch of things at once, right? Do this, okay? You've got the electric field, let's say, that's vertical on the y-axis here. We're going to say the magnetic field is horizontal on the z-axis, okay, going towards and away from you guys. And it's going to travel on the x-axis, again, perpendicular to both of those waves. Okay, sinusoidal electric, sinusoidal magnetic, and then travels this way. So follow along here. Okay? It's going to go like this. Do you see what I'm doing? See what I'm doing? Try it yourself. I'm telling you, it's hard. Okay, do you see what I'm doing there, though? We've got these two changing fields that are in phase with each other, perpendicular to each other, and traveling perpendicular to both of those waves. It's going to look, as a drawing, something like this. We've got an x-axis right here, that's the way the wave is traveling. We've got a y-axis right here. That's where my electric field is. And we've got a magnetic field here on the z-axis like this. Notice these waves are perpendicular to each other, in phase with each other, traveling perpendicular to both of the waves, and they're sinusoidal in nature. Does that kind of make sense, the visualization of that? So this is what it's made of. Where exactly does it come from, though? Well, let's look at middle of the uh, 19th century. A guy named James Cork Maxwell, a Scottish guy. You don't see a lot of Scottish physicists, but here's one. Um, 1861, James Cork Maxwell uh, developed some equations that describes the electromagnetic theory, but uh, we're not going to get into those equations. We're going to just focus on what he said about electromagnetic radiation, where it comes from. Okay, uh, we know that an accelerating, we know that a stationary charged particle will generate an electric field. We know that a moving charged particle will generate a magnetic field and an electric field. But an accelerating charged particle will generate not just an electric and a magnetic field, but an accelerating charged particle will generate a changing magnetic and electric field. So that's key. A moving charged particle generates this. Accelerating charged particle generates this, a changing electric and magnetic field. You see why that's really important in a moment here. 
Maxwell said that changing magnetic fields will in turn generate changing electric fields. And changing electric fields will in turn generate changing magnetic fields. So we've got this accelerating charged particle over here, which generates an electric and a magnetic field that are both changing. And then the electric and magnetic field that we just produce generate more electric and magnetic fields, which generate more electric and magnetic fields, and so on. So it has a way of propagating itself, of moving from the source over here, where the accelerating charge generated the EMR, to the place over there where you're observing the EMR. Philip? Yeah. So here's kind of what ties it all together. Electromagnetic radiation, or EMR, consists of changing electric and magnetic fields. Remember what I did with my hand, right? We've got that sinusoidal electric field, sinusoidal magnetic field that's perpendicular to each other, in phase with each other. That's what EMR is. If EMR consists of a changing electric and magnetic field perpendicular to each other, in phase with each other, and... This is how we get changing electric and magnetic fields propagating from, each, from accelerating charged particles, then it must be accelerating charged particles that generate EMR. Okay, that's the big conclusion from this. Accelerating charged particles generate EMR. Now, there's seven different broad categories of EMR, and they're all generated specifically by different means, but generally, it's all by accelerating charged particles. Accelerating charged particles generate changing electric and magnetic fields, which in turn generate more electric and magnetic fields, which in turn generate more electric and magnetic fields, and so on. That is electromagnetic radiation. Now we're going to learn over this unit that there are two aspects of electromagnetic radiation. There's the wave nature of it, and there's what we call the particle nature of it. Right now, we're going to focus on the wave nature of it, being that we're talking about electric field waves and magnetic field waves, sinusoidal waves. EMR is a wave. It also has a particle nature that we'll just talk about later. But right now, it is a wave that exhibits certain wave properties. If you remember from Physics 20, a concept called diffraction. Diffraction was the spreading out of a wave. If we had an opening and we had a wave coming towards the opening, part of it would go through the opening, and then once it got through, it would spread out. That's diffraction. That's a property of waves, but it's exhibited by EMR. So that must mean that EMR is a wave, right? If you have a property of waves that's exhibited by EMR, then EMR must be a wave. Another wave property that's exhibited by EMR is interference. Again, if you remember from physics 20, interference is that phenomenon that occurs when you have two waves encountering each other at the same time. If you get a crest and a crest together, it makes a really big crest. That's constructive interference. If you have a crest and a trough, then they cancel out. That makes destructive interference. Interference is a wave property, and it's exhibited by EMR, so that must mean that EMR is a wave, right? You'll see later on in this unit, actually, a demonstration where light, believe it or not, can cancel each other out, and you get darkness. When light encounters light, you get dark, sometimes, if it's destructive interference. You can also get brighter light if it's constructive interference. Okay, that's a wave property. The third one is called refraction. Refraction, uh, we touched upon this in physics 20, although not much. It's the bending of a wave. When a wave goes from one medium to another at a certain angle, the direction will change. It will bend. That's called refraction. Happens because of a change in speed when the wave goes from one medium to the other. We'll talk about that in a lot more detail later in the unit. The final one is called polarization. Polarization is the filtering out of components of waves and allowing only certain components to go through. Let me draw a little analogy here, and then I'll show you a little demonstration. Let's say we've got a piece of plywood that has a hole cut in it, a slit or an opening in that plywood that's cut horizontally like this. Let's say we have a rope that we're flicking back and forth like this, producing a transverse wave, right? a sinusoidal transverse wave. If we, if we flick that rope horizontally like this, 
then this piece of plywood with the hole in it is going to allow the whole wave to go through it, right? The rope goes through the, the hole in the plywood. If the wave is horizontal, then the whole wave will just go through that plywood. But if we orient that wave vertically like this, then nothing's going to go through. It's polarized horizontally. It allows only the horizontal component of the wave to go through. If we flick it at an angle, so the wave is like this at some angle, then it's going to allow the horizontal component to go through, but not the vertical component. That makes sense? It's polarized horizontally. And polarization is a property of waves again that's exhibited by EMR. So therefore, EMR must be a wave, right? All right, we're going to end off here today, guys. Uh, this is the electromagnetic spectrum. It lists the seven general categories of electromagnetic radiation, seven different types of electromagnetic radiation. From the song that you saw or listened to a few minutes earlier on YouTube, you know that uh, there are seven general types of EMR. They start with radio waves and microwaves and infrared and visible light, which consists, by the way, of red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. UV, X-rays, gamma rays. Notice a little thing here. Infrared. What do you think infra means? Below, under, under, red, below, red. Ultra means... Higher, above, ultraviolet is above or higher than violet. So infrared is just below red. Ultraviolet is just above violet. Now, these are listed in order of increasing frequency. As we go from left to right, the frequency goes up. So does the energy. You're going to see later on in the unit the specific relationship between frequency and energy. Right now, you can just trust me that it's a linear relationship. Wavelength actually is inversely related to frequency. So as frequency goes up, wavelength goes down. So in other words, radio waves have a high, sorry, have a low frequency, low energy, and a high wavelength, whereas gamma rays have a high frequency, high energy, and low wavelength. Now, do you want the good news or the bad news? Bad news first? All right. The bad news is this. There are seven types of EMR. Each one of those types has a range of frequencies, a range of wavelengths, and a range of energies. You need to know, you need to be able to identify 21 different ranges of numbers. In other words, if I or the diploma exam people give you a certain frequency, you need to be able to tell me what type of EMR it is. If we give you a certain energy, a certain wavelength, you need to be able to tell me or tell them what type of EMR it is. 21 different, not numbers, 21 different ranges of numbers, which is worse. That's the bad news. You want the good news? No, it's not on the formula sheet. Oh, we nice, eh? Now, the good news is this. You only actually have to memorize three of the 21. I want you to memorize, and this is, like, there's no way around this. You've got to memorize that microwaves are 10 to the 9 to 10 to the 12 hertz. That's the frequency of, that's the frequency of microwaves. The frequency of x-rays is 10 to the 17 to 10 to the 19 hertz. And the frequency of visible light, we gotta be a little bit more specific here because the range is so narrow. Four times 10 to the 15, sorry, 10 to the, 10 to the 14, to 7.5 times 10 to the 14 hertz. If I give you a frequency that's 10 to the 10, well, we know it's microwaves. If I give you a frequency that's 10 to the 18, it's x-rays. If I give you 6 times 10 to the 14, it's visible light. But what if I give you 10 to the 8? It's radio waves. You don't need to memorize that, right? If you've memorized it's microwaves, 10 to the 9, 10 to the 12, then anything below that is, is radio waves. What if I give you 10 to the 13? You don't need to memorize it's that's infrared. You just know that it's not microwaves or visible light. So it must be infrared. So now we've got seven ranges down for frequencies 
All you had to do is memorize three. If you're given a wavelength, and you have to identify what type it is, then use this equation. You remember this from physics 20? V equals F lambda. F is equal to V over lambda. V, the speed of light, the speed of any kind of EMR is 3 times 10 to the 8. Divide it by the wavelength that you're given. Solve for frequency. And then compare it against the three frequencies that you've memorized. So now we've got 14 different ranges that we can either know or can figure out from the three frequency ranges that we memorized. Finally, there is a similar formula to calculate frequency from energy. I'm not going to give that to you right now, but there is a formula that's on your data sheet that you can use to calculate frequency from energy. So if you're given an energy of a certain type of light and you want to determine what kind it is, find the frequency and then compare it against the three frequencies that we memorized. Tomorrow we're going to talk more about this, uh, specifically how each type of EMR is generated, not just where they are, what the frequencies and wavelengths are, but how each type beyond the general accelerating charged particles are generated.